So Morgan, uh, how's the team looking heading into the Lions game and is there a chance you might get a few blokes off the injured list and uh, into the team? Uh, there's always a slight chance. We've got so many of them, you'd hope that some will be rolling back in. Uh, with it being a short week, um, I think the big thing for the guys coming back from Africa has been recovery. Uh, we've got a few banged up bodies from that trip as well. Um, and with the, with the rehab guys coming back in, it's also a matter of them being able to have a body of work physically under their belt so they don't re-injure themselves. So we're always quite cautious. Um, we'd love to be trying to race guys back in, but at the moment uh, it doesn't look like there's a huge amount of guys coming back in. How's Toby um, come up after his sort of return game? I've been very impressed actually. Really tough, especially from a hamstring, uh, to be able to run and play with confidence. I was very impressed with uh, the way he came in off the bench, some of his carries, a little bit of communication, some experience, all the things we know that Toby's good for. Um, so he's definitely pressing for a starting position. So uh, we were very impressed with the quite young front row, their performance in Africa. So front row is now one of the positions where we have a little bit of depth and guys pushing for spots, which is always encouraging. Do you think those guys sort of uh, caused a bit of a surprise with how well they handled the bigger minutes and the starting minutes, those three young guys? Yeah, I think they surprised everyone but the coaching staff and their teammates. Uh, Zane was very bullish about how well they'd go and he was proved right, especially against the Sharks. And I think definitely the Sharks possibly underestimated our front row and looked to target them and came up short there, which is a real advantage for us. Then they backed it up in terms of set piece. They were quite good in the scrum on the weekend. Uh, and, and now we've just got to balance not going to the well too many times with some of those young guys. I think uh, you're seeing in Australian rugby that under 20s players are being used more and more. So a guy like Lomax, you have to be very careful that it's often, they play one or two games really well, but if you try and make them play six weeks in a row, week in, week out, their bodies start to struggle. So we've got that balancing act to have with our front row at the moment. So is it more like a sit out completely or just go to the bench and play 35 minutes or 30 minutes? How do you manage those guys? Yeah, I think in consultation with your performance staff, you look at how they're managing, but I'm always a big believer in guys need to be playing footy. Um, and coming off the bench is another talent to be able to have to have that impact over 20. Uh, some guys are really good at starting and not as good at making an impact. Some guys are the inverse. Um, you know, these guys come off and have great impact for 20 minutes off the bench and you give them a starting opportunity and they don't take it. So we're looking for that balance with sort of six front rows at the moment. Guys like Tom Maloney and Cruz are now on the outside of those six guys pushing as well. So front row is a place where we have that competition. Uh, I think we're just looking to find the right balance and also keep combinations. Uh, we've got a really good combination brewing with Ferretti, uh, Tyrell and also Saliba and then the older guys have got a good combination as well so that mix and match is really important for us as well. With the halfbacks, uh, how's Nick doing? How's Mick doing? Um, is there a chance either of them can have a run come Saturday? Yeah Mick, Mick got some bad news this morning to be confirmed but possibly done his Liz Frank uh, which is an extended time out of the game and probably the most popular player in the squad one of the hard, most hard-working guys in the squad whenever he's outside of the 23, he's the hardest trainer. Um, so it was one of those ones where uh, the whole squad just felt terrible about it and, and even coming back now, just a just a great guy to have in your squad. So everyone's really disappointed for him. Sturzy will be a shorter one. It's just one of those sort of high ankle sprain, you, the newfangled syndesmosis injury that everyone seems to have these days where you're not sure where it's anywhere between two to six weeks, somewhere in that bracket, um, but to be confirmed. So How do you feel about Harrison Goddard coming in? Do you feel he's been well, he's really probably coming in with the best form line in the country because he played first grade for Ramwick on the weekend. They beat East in the local derby and he was man of the match, so I was pretty happy. If you play first grade for Ramwick and you beat East, I think that's perfect from my point of my unbiased point of view. Uh, the great thing about Harrison is we were quite lucky. He came down off his own bat um, with his own expenses and, and trained with us in the pre-season. So he knows our plays, he knows our calls. He hasn't had a lot of time, obviously, running with the top squad, but he's been in and around. So he's the logical one, and I think he's an exciting prospect. I think he can go all the way. Needs a lot of work um, physically and tactically and technically, but he's definitely one we've had our eye on for a little while now. Uh, and Ben Meehan there has experience. And so those two guys, when you're looking at your third and fourth string halfbacks, if you want to look at it that way, they're not terrible options to go to. Is Ben, so is Ben right to go if you need someone as well? Yeah, well he's trying today. Um, he's had some niggly lower body issues. Um, so he'll, we'll do a walk sort of jog organisation thing today, which he'll do easily. And then tomorrow will be a really good test of his body. So yeah. between the two of them, uh, we'll see hopefully at least one of them gets through. You never know with the Rebels <laughs> at the moment, so I'm not saying anything. If he can't play though, where do you get your backup half from? Uh, well, we got to, you've got Shoot Shield and, and Brisbane Comp. Look for the next one off the rank. That's just the way it is. Um, and we saw with Will Miller that there are good stories with giving opportunities to guys. 
Um, we've got great pathways. I know a lot of people are talking about our development issues and whatever. We've got the 20s pathway and the Shoot Shield pathway and the Queensland Club, Club Rugby pathway. There's talent there. Some of them are just looking for opportunity and, and these sorts of situations can be the making of some guys. My feeling is it was the making of Will Miller playing in Durban at Kings Park in front of a very hostile crowd. Um, it could be the making of another night. It was, when you look back at the match on the weekend, it wasn't the new guys that were the ones who were causing like all the errors. It was guys that have been around for, you know, five years or whatever it was. Mm. Like that must, As a coach, that must just be so frustrating, the turnovers that led to tries and... Yeah, I, 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 got, I must admit that some of that responsibility is mine. Uh, when you lose, so you lose your nine on the Friday, then you lose your other nine with no backup nine 20 minutes in. And I hadn't prepared our team to play with that halfback. So we were trying to make things up on the go, mixing and matching. We tried Colby, then we had more injuries in the forwards, and we tried Ben Bola Bola at nine. So I didn't prepare my players for that eventuality. You can't prepare for everything, but that was a big mistake. Like we, once the nine went off, we couldn't win. I think everyone was disappointed with the manner in which we lost, but there was no real way we could have scored more points than the Kings from that point on. That's not saying the score it was at all acceptable, unacceptable, and deeply disappointed. But the errors come from fatigue and pressure and stress. Uh, I could have probably done more in terms of attack to alleviate that. I mean, we didn't score a try in the game. So uh, I didn't give them enough uh, weapons to, to ask the Kings questions. I thought early on when Snowden was there, we did exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to set them up and make them defend the full width of the field and then look to exploit it later on in the game by going through the middle. Unfortunately, we only got halfway through that plan. Um, so you can talk about errors and frustrations, but I think we were just exhausted from just having to hold on to the ball with no direction and just do our best. Do you uh, use your experience from the last two games against South African teams to play in, here in Melbourne? Yeah, you do. Uh, the Lions aren't your typical South African side. I think I heard Tom mention as well that they have a, a hybrid New Zealand game, so they play probably the most rugby. They kick the the third least amount of any team in the competition, which is not normal for a South African team. What you will get this weekend, with this reliable Melbourne weather permitting, is a, is a, is a high octane, high tempo game of rugby. They'll play, we're, you know, we're down the table, so they're going to fancy their chances as well, score some points, so they'll play, which suits us because we want to play too. Uh, I think we're in a position now, we just got to play rugby and back ourselves and see what happens. If we can have the intent, the intensity, the desperation, and the willing to work hard that we've had against Chiefs, Waratahs for periods, uh, those sorts of games, Brumbies as an example, then we'll be in this fight. And then we can go back and see if our rugby's good enough. Uh, we just got to make sure we're in the fight physically and mentally, and then see if we can back our attack to cause them problems, because I'm sure they'll do the same. We only saw Ben Bola Bola in 10 for a, you know, half the game or so, but mm. how do you think he handled it? And looking yeah. for this week? Yeah, I was happy enough with Ben. I probably thought we could have given him more help. Um, you know, tens these days. Stephen Larkin was the last ten that could see everything on his own and do it on his own. No ten since then can do it. It's too hard. Uh, so he's the exception to the rule, Larkin. The guys now that are playing ten, they just need help, communication from elsewhere. There were opportunities all over the park against the Kings. We weren't good enough to find them or communicate them to our ball players. Uh, so hopefully Ben will get a bit more help from all the players. I need to prepare him better as well so he can go out there with a bit more confidence, a bit more sure of what his role is. And I think he'll do well. He did enough to, to warrant another opportunity somewhere there as a ball player. Uh, you know, we stuck with Jackson for a while. We gave him some good, good solid weeks and we'll probably do something similar with Ben. He's earned the right to at least another opportunity, I would think. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. guys.